Razor. Razor. <laughs> and welcome back to the studio. And we're joined in the studio today and none other than the musical maestro himself, Mr. Sean Jones. Yeah, how you doing? Hey, Sean, thanks for coming into the studio. California has just come into the studio, friends, and I'll tell you what, I can feel the heat from here, so it's that time of the day. There it goes, Sean, look at that. <laughs> what about that razor? <laughs> so how's things, buddy? Oh, it's great. Oh, cool, and you were gigging last night? Gigging last night at the Amplified Bar. The yeah. With Mickey Murphy. Yeah, Mickey's a good, good guy too, isn't he? Really talented. Razor, Mickey. <laughs> so, uh, and I missed the gig last night. I couldn't get down. I was away. We were doing experimental film and, and uh, <laughs> see, I noticed, so I'm, get, I'm getting the flack already, friends. Right, hold on. Yeah. Would you believe the Californian guitar player has oh, lost his microphone? Oh, would you quit? I was wondering what you're reaching for there. <laughs> we're all right. <laughs> he was going, <laughs> we're getting close already. Would you quit? <laughs> but uh, it, was good, it was good to see you. Enjoyed that coffee see, there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. yeah. Nice grounded. Nice, a nice grounded espresso mm. there, friends. So uh, it was pretty cool there, not, not grounded. You like grounded, don't you? I come in every time I come to town. I love that place. Yeah. I get my eggs and my coffee and. Oh, that my my iPhone and my computer both remember the password, so I'm online. Right the minute away. you go in there, Sean's online. That's right. If you see me online and Nuri, you know I'm a grounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, I'll tell you what. You've been Nuri that often now. You, you know, you're like a son of Nuri now, aren't you? Uh, Honorary Nuri, man. You know, I just feel at home here. I have friends in this town, and um, Jerry Morgan. Jerry from, Razor. Jerry, he's, Jerry's a superstar. He's he's from uh, this area, and my, my buddy Brian Savage from Savages. I Brian. have a lot of friends in this town, so I just come straight here, and it, it's my it's my home base to where I can go out. And sometimes I'll go to Belfast, sometimes I'll go into Warren Point or Ross River, but um, I just you know we're close to the bus station here. Yeah. It gets me to the airports, and I can get around real quick and easy. I know where everything's at, easy enough. Yeah. So you're, you're Ventura in mm. California. Yeah. And that's, that's over in the, the west coast, as they call it. Yep. And the uh, yep. weather's pretty good there, Sean, it's, isn't it? It's not too shabby. We have May gray and, you know, gray sky July and June gloom, which is th this cloud of fog that rolls in until the afternoon during those months because of the heat's coming on, but the moisture from the ocean. I'm a mile from the beach. Wow. So, yeah, so it's it's beautiful. But there's a great little music community there, and uh, there's lots of gigs in town. And, um, yeah, I mean, everybody is, uh, you know, doing gigs and posting their shows, and the community is very supporting, and it's 50 minutes from L.A. And if you live in L.A., if you're on the west side, you're going to the east side, or you're going, you know, from Santa Monica into the valley, it, I, I'm, I can get to L.A. quicker usually from Ventura because there's no traffic coming down the coast into L.A. Or I can go through Malibu and see how the other half lives. Oh, you know? wow. Yeah, the other half. <laughs> that, yeah, that must be spectacular, isn't it, Sean? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You know, I know the edge has got like 10 acres up on the hill overlooking the ocean. And, uh, you know, everybody's yeah. got, everybody that's yeah. got... Yeah. Edge, we're going to come over and do a banter show in your... In your, in your Gaff, absolutely. Yeah, and we're going to get Sean to play yeah. with you. What That'd about be that? Fantastic. And we'll Love get we'll, we'll get Bino, as I call him Bino, because he doesn't buy any drink for anybody. <laughs> Not Bino. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, His first name is now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Whitey for short. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry, that's bad. So, uh, it'd be good to know. Um, so you're here, Sean. You're in your Irish tour, really, aren't you? Mm. You know this. Yeah, I went to Italy first. It's a market and territory I'm kind of opening up. A buddy of mine married uh, an Italian woman 30 years ago, and he lives in the north of Italy. So this is my third tour in Italy, and we're opening that up. It's working well. And then another friend of mine married a Swiss guy a couple of years ago. So this is my second tour of Switzerland, and I just did um, a few shows in Italy, a show in Switzerland. I was there for a couple of days, and we climbed a 6,000-foot mountain. Wow in Frumen, and uh, at one point I was getting very confused about how to say thank you and please, you know, in a very short amount of time my language was changing, you know, <laughs> I'm just like, how oh, the hell with it, they all speak English, so. <laughs> They'll have to deal with it then. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so that's a good one, so, um, mm. you know, you, you, you do, you play Europe, mm. you play America, mm. where else do you play a show? Um, well, play America, play, well, where else is there? America and Europe. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's that answered, folks. That's that answered. 
Well, I, I've done, you know, over the years I've done some USO stuff. Um, I play guitar for a country singer in the States named Dina Carter, who, while I've been over here, she just did a big show with, you know, Keith Urban and Vince Gill and... and uh, All before, big names. Yeah, before, she sold seven million albums on her own, so I play the guitars on her new album, and it's starting to chart over there. It's doing real well. And so, um, you know, I, I do gigs with her. We went to South Korea, played for the troops. And I, with my group back in the day, went to Bosnia and um, Iraq and stayed in in the green zone there. Oh, boy. Not the green screen, but no, the green zone. No, not the zone. green. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, here, that must have been something out there then, was it? It was freaky, the, especially the, the Iraq thing because it was in 2004, so it was in the heat of the troubles there. And, you know, you're just laying on a cot in Saddam Hussein's mistress palace where the Ba'ath Party met and had their meetings. And, you know, trying to sleep was next to an impossibility. I think I'd probably sleep better on an international flight than in that place. <laughs> it was really strange, but, you know, it, it had to be done. Was there lots happening, like bombs, Oh, bullets? you'd sit there and lay, you know, sky would light up and some would get louder and closer mm. and some would be far off in the distance and very strange. But like here in the 70s, by the yeah. sides of it in the yeah. 80s, the early 80s. Yeah. But you, you, so, and you've, you've, so you played the, to the troops then, the American troops, yeah? American troops in, in, Ara in Iraq and then when I went to Bosnia it was a USO, so it was an international yeah. thing. Yeah, peacekeeping force, yeah. so to speak. Yeah, so it was... It, yeah, I mean, that, that's a little while back now. And yeah. South Korea as well. South Korea, uh, four years ago with Dina. Yeah, and that, you know, <clears throat> things are settled over there pretty much. Because you don't think of South Koreans, you know, listening to a bit of country music or, uh, you know, a bit of yeah. rock music as you play, a bit of blues even, you know? Well, it was for the troops, so we were mainly playing for... For the troops, the, yeah. Yeah, the American troops, and um, so, yeah, that, I mean, you know, but with Dina... You know, it's five-star hotels and, you know, buses, up. buses everywhere you go and motorcades from time to time. And, you know, that's a whole different experience. But I'm glad I get a little bit of it, you know. Because, <laughs> I mean, a lot of the time you, you, you're you touring on your own, really, aren't you? Yeah, touring on my own. I put a lot of my tours together myself. And I also have the help of some agents as well. Uh, but a lot, of it's, uh, a lot of it's done. I mean, the stuff that, as we say in the music business, they are two separate words, music and business. Music is what you get to do. The business is what you have to do. And if you let one or the other slack, then it's all the points are going to meet up. And at times in my life, I've done better at one than the other. And it would be probably the music I'd been doing better at than the business. And now I just have to stay on top of all of it, especially with social media. Yeah, It's allowing us to, yeah. to kind of navigate our own careers and, and do what we want to do. Yeah. And... and um, some of it, <clears throat> some of it is a little bit more difficult because you're going, God, where's the time to get back to my music? You know, if, if you're an independent musician, but at the same time, you do one little thing that creates a bit of a buzz, and all of a sudden, you know, it throws you back into your music because you have to create more content to keep up on it. But, mm. you know, as things grow, there are times when I have an assistant and I'll be able to, thank goodness I have someone that, doesn't have to stay on payroll all the time. Like I can just go, okay, I got a batch of work for you. Here, you know, let's, some of it will be gratis, some of it will be paid, and yeah. we'll work together to get stuff done. And other times it's just, you know what, I've got to focus and get it done myself. Yeah. You know, and I'll do that. So. But it's, it's good then that you have that bit of help, isn't yeah, it? You know, it when really maybe, is. You know, especially when, when you're probably writing your own songs and, yeah. and putting the music together for them and all that, you know? Yeah, um, absolutely. Cause can you give me, can you give me a rough idea of a typical day for Sean Jones, or do you have a oh. typical day? Well, yeah, I mean, there's the typical day and what it is that I want to do, and then there's the typical day that ends up. Ha there's all the things that I want, and there's things that ends up happening, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, in a typical day of what I want to do is get up and go run or go exercise first thing in the morning, and then uh, come back, make some coffee, and uh, uh, sit down at the computer. Or, well, actually, it would be do some writing, do some writing, and get that going, and maybe play some guitar, and then get to the business. But what ends up happening is I wake up, 
I make my coffee, I get in front of the computer, <laughs> <laughs> I start getting that going and get my emails because, you know, being that I do tour internationally, I'm on like this international time zone thing to where, you know, in the mornings is the afternoon here, you know, the, the evenings here, like I'll get finished with a gig here and I'll be texting or emailing or what have you things that are going on back at home yeah because it's the middle of the day there eight hour time difference so it never you know you can just work until your eyes pop out mm -hmm. but you know I basically I'm trying to get <clears throat> I'm trying to get stuff done uh, business wise that allows me the freedom to get back to my music right and when you let your health go and don't do the the, the exercise and all that for me that's very important but if I don't, then the clarity isn't there, and you know it's not good. So I mm. try to make sure that I get. That's part of the regimen is have, having to stay, you know, yeah, stay, stay in good health. And I live in a beautiful part of the world, so I'm lucky. So usually I can count on every day being a good day to go for a run or for a walk or a yeah. hike. And, and the good weather gives you a buzz. So oh, you yeah. know, um, we don't have good weather in this country, as you know. We do the odd. We get the odd day here. But and you there. got the morn mountains. We've got the Morns, yeah, that, beautiful, the, aren't they? Oh, it's incredible. I yeah. love the Morns. I love to hike up to the stone. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I've done there a There you go, friends. Because, yeah. you, know, I've I've I've, you know, we're friends on, on, on social media, and, mm. uh, you know, you put up, you do put up some fabulous photographs. Thank you. You're, you're a, an adventurous dude. Yeah. What I have to say is because when Sean's in, in Italy or somewhere, then you put up these fabulous photographs where you've yeah. been and you know, yeah. beautiful mountains or yeah. you know seaside places or something. But you're always out and about. You don't sit. You don't. You don't. You're not one to sit in. Are I'm you? not sedentary. No. No. I can't be. I can't be. I love adventure. Mm. And when I was a little bit younger, I would do crazy stuff that might be on the edge of losing your life, kind of thing. <laughs> Climb um, up the side of a hill, you know, and then looking down and go, "Oh my God, that's you know." Did I actually claim up here? <laughs> How am I going to get back down? You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I, I, and my other love is photography, and I, I wouldn't say I'm a master at it, but with the way the iPhones work now and and cameras, good cameras now, you know, a few hundred dollars, a couple hundred quid, and you can have a decent camera and editing function. So I, I get into that, and it helps me remember where I've been because sometimes I'm too busy. I like to journal too, so I write about my experiences and sometimes that gets done on planes oh. or you know when I have downtime at an airport I'll, I'll get out and journal about where I've been and that's yeah, good. That's, that's, that's I'd like to write a book someday, you know. But that's, that's I was just going stories. to say that the the book of Sean Jones is coming your way soon, friends. Why you not? know why not? That's a good <clears throat> thing, Sean. That's <clears throat> a really good thing because the life of a typical life of a musician, you know, you, you travel, you go go to your gig, you get your gig done and then you're out of there. Yeah. You know, and um for instance, Pat McManus, the Pat Razor for Pat McManus <laughs> in the band. Pat was saying, you know, Pat was saying, that, like, quite a player, brilliant player, yeah, yeah, and a, and a hell of a hell of a nice guy. Like, you yeah. know, Pat, we're all we're friends, it's a good long time. But Pat was saying it four hours from, you know, he'll go he'll go to a town, say in Ireland, down to Cork, maybe up in Belfast, over in the west, yeah. and four hours. Yeah. So he, the minute he lands in that town, yeah. gear out, gear in, yeah. gig gear out, back home. So that's yeah. four, he's only spent four hours. Yeah. So if he goes, if he's gigging at night, he hasn't seen the place. Yeah. So the odd time, he got, he's gigging in Corsica, the island of Corsica. Oh, wow. So, uh, that sounds like a place I need Yeah, I, I, I was asking, I said, now if you need a roadie for that one, mm. give me a shout, but he didn't. But uh, the, <laughs> there were um, him and the band, and they spent a few days there, and then mm. the likes of that, now they can go and relax and you know, sightsee and that, you know. Yeah. But four hours, he was telling me, that, that's what that's all he sees of a gig. Yeah, you know? I mean, same at, here, like back in California, we've got so much traffic. And I live, I work a lot in Orange County, which is um, down south. It's about, where I work a lot is about an hour above San Diego. But I live three hours from San Diego, two hours from that gig. But when there's traffic, like if I have a gig at 9 p.m., if I don't leave my place by noon, by noon because of the LA traffic in between there's you know people are getting home or commuting or what have you it'll be four hours to get to a gig that's two hours away and so basically I route my shows and for the most part uh, like I said I have a little bit of help or I do a lot of it myself but I'll route it to where I go out and I make a big circle but sometimes if the gigs are paying really good I've got to shoot out shoot back, 
have a gig back in Ventura area or Santa Barbara or up at, above that, north of that. Or I'll go out inland where I grew up, at San Bernardino area, which is out in the desert. I have work out there. And, um, you know, sometimes it'll just be back and forth and back and forth, and I'll log in 1,000 miles in a week or 700 miles of driving in a week. And it's that's the stuff you have to do, you know. You have to do, yeah. And, and I don't want to sit behind a desk all my life, so, you know. It's not for you. It's not for me. It was no. my, my dad's job, my sister's job, and God bless him for doing it. Yeah. And I know how to do it, but it's not what I want to no. do. So I, no, but you're happy with what you're doing. You're living the life you want, really, aren't you? I, I am. I mean, there's always room for improvement, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Why not? But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I get to play my guitars, and um, one of my dreams... Uh, of coming over to Ireland, my first trip here, I'd stopped at the Belfast Guitar Emporium. Uh, I was touring over here, and I picked up a Loudon. Is that where you picked it up in Belfast? The first time, ten wow. years ago. And I was, you know, I'm left-handed, so there was like one of them hanging on the wall. And I picked it up, and I strummed it, and felt it, and I'm like, what is this? What instrument is this? <laughs> so, um, what is it made of? Yeah, what is, you know, what's it about? So. All these years, I've wanted to, I've wanted to play aloud. And then, two years ago, I was at the NAM show in Anaheim, California, walking around the big music show they have, the Merchant Show, and there was uh, George Loudon and his daughter-in-law and his kids. You know, it's a family-run yeah. business. Razor George Loudon. How you doing, buddy? That's class yeah. guitars all hey, the way. I, I know George. We met him <laughs> down at the at his factory down in Down Patrick. Mm. And that's, that's very impressive, that place. It's wonderful. But to I see them there. making the guitars, like, oh, yeah. it's incredible. Well, I'm getting ready. I got permission from a couple of the luthiers there and builders there to post some stuff on my I have a YouTube channel, Sean Jones Music. Sean Jones Music, that's check it right, out. That's right. And um, I got <clears> clearance to post some stuff uh, of the... The, the neck shapers and the as long as I don't go into the top secret areas. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're not, the, there's nobody allowed in them areas. Yeah. The, they're um, they're amazing and everything's hand built there. You know, I um, know the different types of wood, Sean, mahogany from Brazil, something else from. I mean, yeah. it's worldwide. African blackwood, which oh, is like the most black. expensive wood there is. He built ironically. Well, to make a long story short, basically George Loudon and I met two years ago, and then. Uh, I made it a point uh, a year ago to, I met him and I said, do you know Speedy Mullen? And he looks at me, Speedy, Speedy. Mullen? Speedy. Raider Speedy. And I'm in California <laughs> saying, do you know Speedy Mullen? He goes, Speedy Mullen. So all of a sudden, click, right? And I said, you know what, I'll come over and see you. I'd like to come see you if that would be all right. And I'll please come to the factory. And so I did. And... Um, I spent all day there, and there's a great little cafe in the little... That's so right. we went and had a nice conversation, and Speedy went over with me, which was great. Connection was made. Next thing you know, um, they've made me part of the family. So I'm, I'm, my dream has come true. In Ireland, I'm playing Irish guitars. Handmade? Yeah, yeah. Handmade Irish guitars? Handmade, I've got two of them. He made two of them for me. I asked him to make me one. He made two, and he's like, well, which one do you want? And I said, both. <laughs> so, so I've got both of them. You walked into that one, George. Yeah, it was great. Mm. So we've got a tour going on, actually, coming up. Um, I'm sorry I'm directing this conversation. Go ahead. Uh, it's the Banta Show, brother. No, it's the Banta it's, Show. It's, it's important because yeah. um, there are two other endorsees, uh, Stephen Inglis, who is from Hawaii, and he plays slacky style, which is amazing, beautiful. And he also plays a fan fret, which is a... A guitar where the frets in the middle are straight, you know, they're yeah. straight up and down and they fan out like this. And actually, I guess it's easier to play. I'm left handed, so for me to pick up an upside down fan fret, it would just be the, the most difficult thing in the world. To yeah. Do. But, anyways, he's a brilliant player. And um, Thomas Lieb, who's from Austria, but ironically enough, he lives half an hour from me. No way. He lives out in the desert with his family and he tours internationally. He's brilliant. He's one of those. Uh, finger style, uh, like rhythm players where he's slapping on the guitar and he's a master at it. So we've put together this, this trio called the Global Guitar Greats where we all get up and each do uh, 30 to 40 minutes separately and at the end we come together and do a few pieces. Oh, wow. So we're doing a tour sponsored by Loudon um, uh, from San Diego up to Oregon, so all the west coast of America. And then we're coming over here in November. 
Wow. And we're doing a tour of the UK <clears throat> and possibly Italy, Austria. We're, we're figuring that out right now. And um, it's a really cool thing. And I think it'll be uh, a success. You know? Well, I, this is a, it's going to be a yeah. success. It's not you so. think it's going to be. Because, I mean, you're a big name yourself. You know, you're mm -hmm. a big established name, Sean, and you're you're always made welcome in Ireland. You're you're yeah, always wanted you. here in Ireland. Thank you. you know, and the, the people here have grown to love you. You're like, yeah. a, you're I part. Love you, guys you know, too. You, you're you're really you're you really are part Irish man, aren't you? Well, I'm Irish and Welsh. Irish and Welsh. Do you see? And well, you know, you know it's funny Celtic. about about America, especially California, is that our our lineage only goes back so far. Yeah. So that I can only go back so far and relate to what happened there. You know, and then I come over here, and I mean, it's just it's something very kindred about all of it. You know, it feels very grounded. I like it. <laughs> you know, but it's, it's, yeah, I mean, I feel very much at home. It's my 17th tour here in 10 years, so I come back almost twice a year, sometimes yeah. three times. And um, uh, I, I love it over here. I, I just, I love it. You yeah. Know? And you, you, really, you have got it, you've got an, a large amount of friends here mm. from you from you started playing in the blues festival really yeah and people have taken to you and you know you're a nice enough guy you know people go up you know you're not standoffish no. you know people go up and shake your hand and then they go hey, he's a nice guy and once the, the, the word spreads around here you know yeah. that he's a nice guy people yeah. then take to you you know you're you're, you're taking into their into their hearts really aren't i you? don't like the, those other guys no you know, Be gone, don't, guys. <laughs> don't like them. So I don't, I don't want to act like the guys that I don't like. Yeah. I want to be the other guy. Yeah. If I can do, you know, I will do. So. No, you're cool, you're cool. Uh, you're, 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 you're uh, as cheers. I say, you're, you're part of the furniture here in Ireland now, aren't you, really? Mm -hmm. And um, getting back to George Loudon Guitars, so yeah. that's, this is going to be some tour, man. You're, so you're back here in November for this tour. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is going to be very special, isn't it? Well, the minute I land in California on the 29th, I get back. Um, I've got a string of 15 dates. I just did one last night. 15 dates in the next until the 20. I fly home on the 29th, so dates every day. 28th I pack and I'm gone. So I have like three days off between now and then, and it's just every day cranking away. But as soon as I land, I have three shows with my band, and then I have two days to prepare for this Global Guitar Greats tour, and then we're off and running with that. So I'm advancing. They call it advancing. You know the stuff that you're gonna promote and do. I'm advancing all those shows now. While I'm here, I'm promoting the three I, shows I have with my band, and then the whole tour with the, the Global Guitar Greats. And you got to be careful about the way you do it because you don't want to overlap your, overlap your promotion, and you want the optimal amount of people to show up at all your gigs. So timing is everything, and and we're working out the details and logistics of everything. And um, that's it's it's a lot of work, but you know the alternative is not good. <laughs> I don't want to go around yeah. doing this, yeah. sitting on my hands, you know. <laughs> no, 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 no. You're, yeah. As I say, you're, you're doing what you, what you love doing. Mm. And, and this, is, this is your life, basically. And, uh, you know, at least you've got plenty of support. Yeah. You know, you, you're, as I said, this man is established. You're a worldwide established musician. Yeah. You know what I mean? And people, you know, you've got your own genre that people love. And you're also, you come out with your own original material. Yeah. And people here like that. Yeah. You know, they like to hear new things and... You know, we've got some new records coming out too, which are records. Records. Yeah, I just showed my age. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, you're but, coming uh, up to your 40th birthday next yeah, year, isn't it? Right. Here's that. 20 here's quid. That, 20 quid. That tenor, I owe you. Uh, tenor. You said tenor. <laughs> right. Okay. <I> don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm having. A, we're doing two new records at home. Uh, two new projects at home. Uh, one, they're both produced by the same guy, Josh Groban's guitar player and musical director. He's brilliant. His name is Tarek Akoni, and he's a brother, about six foot five, talks like a surfer and wears cowboy boots and cowboy shirts. Cool. And, hey, man, what's happening, man? <laughs> and he's, he's the coolest guy. We've become such great friends, and I love him. And he's, uh, he's brilliant. He writes all the charts for all the orchestras when Josh is on the road because they take on different orchestras in every part of the world they go. So... He writes all the charts, so he'll turn around and conduct the orchestra and then turn around and play guitar in the band, and he's wow. incredible. Tariq? So Tariq Akoni. Tariq Akoni. Razor Tariq. Uh, Tariq. <laughs> Razor. You're the man, class boy. <laughs> so uh, he's producing the project. He's actually at home mixing my acoustic record now. 
that we're actually in the midst of making while I'm over here. I have an Italian photographer guy in California that did all the artwork for it. Tark produced the record, he's mixing it, and I'm approving files and all that while I'm here so that when I get home, the project will be ready for the tour, the Global Guitar Greats tour, all acoustic record. And then when that's done, then we start on the full production CD, and he's, he can call on a lot of favors, so we're going to have strings on it and horns on it, depending on the treatment of the wow. song. A record that I've always wanted to make. Because mo most of my records have always been pretty much guitar records, you yeah. know? layered guitar records where it's acoustic and electric and I'm a control freak so it's done all the way I want and this time around I'm leaving it in the hands of someone that I think you know plays rings around me and has ears as big as uh, you know hard. exactly <laughs> and so he's producing the records and I'm coming in with my guitars and I'm coming in with my songs and I'm going run with it you know and I'm really excited about these albums because, you know, it'll be a surprise to me. Yeah, so it's a new collaboration, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. production-wise it is. And if there's anybody I'd want out playing guitar on my albums as well, it would be a guy like Tarek. And, you know, I, pff, he's just brilliant. Yeah. He's a brilliant player. It, look him up on Facebook. Yeah, we'll give him a out. shout there on Facebook and w uh, give him a big shout there. Give him a razor. Tarek Oconee. Check him out. Tarek Oconee, razor. Yes, he's, he's a brilliant player. You'll find him on my page. You have to go to me to find him. So Yeah, <laughs> so you have to look no, for no, Sean Forrest. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he is on there and, and um, really exciting. He's working with everybody. He's, you know, while we're in the studio working together, he gets a call and he's going out on the road with Stevie Wonder. Or he's playing with Josh, or he's in the studio in L.A. playing with Herman Matthews, or Craig McIntyre, my drummer back at home, just got the gig with the Goo Goo Dolls. Whoa. So now we have to find another drummer. <laughs> no, but he's still playing on my projects, and not my drummer, but the guy that I work with, yeah. you know. you know, yeah. I own no one. They don't own me. We just all have this big love fest and make music, you know. That's brilliant. And so uh, it's a really great cross-pollination. Like Jerry's become friends on Facebook. Well, that's the thing that's great about Facebook is that all this cross-pollination of musicians and people, people you were looking for, people you don't want to know, people, <laughs> you know, musicians that have always had admiration for other musicians, you can find them there, you know. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's great. It's a great thing. So... Um, Oh, now, are you on the Twitter as well, then, Sean? You know, I don't tweet much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't like the name of the word tweet. Yes. I, I, I'm not a bird. <laughs> but, no, I'm trying to do more of it just because I know yeah. everybody does, and it's very useful. But, I mean, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, fan page, Facebook, personal page. Oh, yeah, music. When do I get to do that, you know? Yeah. And so I try to focus mainly on the Facebook thing and... It, it's a system that is easy for me to work, yeah. and I'm used to it. But when I have to sit and spend hours trying to figure out how to work another application or something, when I could be opening up a Pro Tools session and working or meeting up with someone to co-write with or writing something myself, you know, mm. I, I need to spend, I have to be careful about the time spent and what I'm doing, you know. Yeah, because uh, you know yourself, when you get onto Facebook, an hour can go like that. Oh, yeah. You know? And, and time's precious, especially for you, because you have so much going on and across the up the pond, really, and uh, you have all this happening. So, I suppose you, you need to get on quick and get everything sorted and then back off again. Well, do you? a friend of mine that lives in Ventura, he manages, um, his name is Mark Hartley. He has a big um, management company, uh, Fitzgerald Hartley, and they deal with Brad Paisley, Vince Gill, Colby Calais, a whole bunch of different artists. And he lives in Ventura, and I've had several meetings and hangs with him, you know, and as he puts it, he bicycles between everything that he has to do. So you can only spend so much time on each thing, and when you have to spend too much time on one thing, other things suffer. So when you get an application down or something that you're doing, you get down a system of how it works. It streamlines, and you keep moving around, and, you know, it's when your computer freezes up or they're doing some research and development on Google or whatever, and all of a sudden your computer's running slow or your phone's running slow or you went to send it, you know, these things slow you down. Yeah. You know, and it's it's just a great day when it all goes real fast, bam, 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 sharing events, blah, 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 back to your music, clear the mind. It's just a lot. I knackered listening to you, Sean. I'm right. <laughs> Give me a drink of water there quick. Oh, man. But it just shows you, doesn't it? Um, so sh can I ask you, Sean, have you got... A favorite venue for a gig? I just want to pick your brain here. 
you know, because it... Out my, of all the venues. My favorite venue is when people are listening. Yeah. There it is. That's really all I can say. If it's five people or 5,000 people or 500 people, I just posted on, on a YouTube a show that I did at a place called The Coach House. I was opening for um, Los Lobos, who are, you know... They're fab. East L.A. boys, you know? Yeah, they're fab, and aren't they? So I grew up in a, a Latino neighborhood in San Bernardino where, you know, most of my neighbors were uh, Mexican. And and um, so I love Tejano music. I love yeah. uh, mariachi music. And these guys can go from Jimi Hendrix to mariachi, Tejano, you know, uh, Texas shuffles, blues, what have you. They do it all. And they were the nicest guys, and they've done shows with Clapton. They've done shows with, you know, Robert Cray. They they go to, you know, the Eric Clapton's guitar uh, concerts that he does every year. They're amazing. But my point is, is that I did this show, and it was sold out, and there was 600 people in the room, uh, and the quality of my video is not so good, but you can hear it well. The sound, and yeah. you can see it and the camera doesn't move around and you don't get up close and all that stuff. But the audience was so engaged and I thought we played well enough to where I just went ahead and posted it because it's a full length 40, it took 10 hours to upload this stupid file. <sighs> 10 but hours. it's a 40 minute show. And so for people over here to get to see what I do over there, you know, we had a standing ovation that night and the crowd was just so engaged I mean, that's my favorite kind of a show. With, yeah. You know, where, or if I do, I did a house concert in Austria the other day, and I was doing a Celtic piece that I wrote on the, my Loudon, and I had these two Austrian guys get up and start do, doing jigs, you know, <laughs> and it was hilarious, but they were in love with what was happening, yeah. and I, I was too, you know? Yeah. You know, and so those are my favorite gigs, is yeah. when people are paying attention and they're not off on a drunk, you know, screaming at somebody or a fight breaks out, it's, that's when you want to pack up your gear yeah. and get on out of town. And yeah, because you, you, you probably think, what I'm, I'm wasting my time playing what's here. What's the point? Yeah. You, you know? know. And we were talking earlier on, friends, Sean has a great way of handling hecklers, as I witnessed oh. down at the Blues Festival. Don't get there. me started. And uh, <laughs> I, I tell you now, it was, a, it was a, a drunken heckler, a big guy, and he was shouting up at Sean and all the rest. And then Sean just started, turned the guitar on his nice as pay, started singing, you're a, you're a, la, 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 Starts da, with a W. Da, da, da. <laughs> <laughs> For those that don't understand, yeah. it does start with a W. But that guy, I tell you what, you took, you took real good care of him because a, he, start, he stopped heckling. B, he started looking around to see who was looking at him. And C, he then walked out through the door. Was and then the gig continued as if nothing had happened. We were all cheering and <sighs> all terrific. I love that. So you're a top man for that. You know? Well, in, in, in America, that word that we're discussing that starts with a W yeah. isn't necessarily a, a cuss word or a slang word or a, you know, it's it just kind of, when you say it, people go, oh, ha, 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 ha. You know, but here it's actually a, I mean, it's a... It's a, it's a pretty ins insulting word over here. You it know? is, and I didn't really realize <laughs> that back in, the, back in the day, and I think maybe I was on the cusp of, of realizing that when I did that. But you know what? We have an expression in America that's going around these days, and it's, I ain't scared. And I, you know, at this age and what I've been through and what I'm going through in my life, it's... You know, I'm not looking for a fight, but at the same time, you know, defusing trouble is always the best thing. Yeah. I, I don't like breaking flesh on yeah. someone. That's not my thing. It's I'm a peaceful guy. My dad was a really tough guy um, that I nobody would ever want to challenge my father. And rest his soul, he's gone now. But he instilled in me something that was a, a level of confidence and also not being afraid. And I'm also a faith-driven person, so I'm not afraid there. Uh, but uh, but peace is always first. Love is always first, you know. And that's if I can s defuse a situation by throwing my arm around somebody that's yelling at somebody else and go, "Hey, buddy, you know, let's just chill out." And, yeah. You know, that's always the best way to go. Or Sometimes you, you can kill them with kindness, as they all say in a way. <laughs> or, or if you can, you know, poke fun at someone else yeah. in a nice, in an endearing kind of way, and let them know that you're just joking around and look. Always eye contact. Always eye contact because. When you don't do the eye contact and you're slagging somebody and you're just poking fun yeah. or you're trying to diffuse like some guy that's drinking too much and he's heckling. Yeah. 
defuse it defuse by it. either you know having a go at them you know as a joke getting everybody involved and then like, it's just a it's a, yeah. trying to be diplomatic about it yeah but really ultimately you want the guy to stop yeah please you know well you have a good way of handling it and i've seen it for myself and i'll tell you what <laughs> yeah, the, the guy just turned on the scene, you know, because everybody was looking at him. You know, you were addressing him, you weren't addressing the, the audience. No. And then everybody was looking at him, and then he got the, you know, shit, everybody's looking at me here, you know. <laughs> and then when you get kept going, and you, you, and I'll tell you what, I have to say, it was the nicest, it was the nicest way to put somebody away, to get rid of somebody that I've ever seen in my life without without using violence or, you know, bad talk or anything. You sang, you just sang it. Well, you sang the show a, must go on, my you, friend. You sang a nice little number and yeah, that was yeah, it. Right. He, he got the message, he went that way. <laughs> and funny, when he actually left, you got a huge round of applause and then you, <laughs> you just went, is he gone? Right, well, back to work. Yeah, and you right. just went straight into it again. So you're oh, a star. Cheers. That was oh, brilliant. You know. Absolutely brilliant. Dead on, like. Yeah, dead on. <laughs> oh, he's a queer bay, this fella here. He sent me messages with bay in it. Now, yeah. how neary can you get? Check well, that one out, know. friends. You know, I love when you send me that message. You know, it's all for the crack. It's all for the crack. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll have to get we'll have to get Jerry in here with us someday. You oh, know? he'll take over the show. Oh, he's somebody, isn't he? He'll walk in with a green screen. You won't be able to see him. Yeah, because he was there the last time, and then he put the green screen. All you can see was the head, and he's he's a star and a half. It's Jerry. not easy being green. No, oh, no, God. it's not. That's no. bad. <laughs> Uh, what else can we talk about? Right. Um, well, we're going to talk about. Um, so you're off to Dunfermline. Mm. So and then. Yeah, there's a great festival up there, Dunfermline Jazz and Blues, and I, this is my third year doing it. Um, provided I'm able to make it, which I think I will. Yeah. Be. But I'm going up to do a fundraiser. The organizer came out. He's a surfer, and he was very disappointed in California waves because up in Donegal, there's some very angry waves. And you've got to be a man's man to surf those waves. And I would have to say I, I've only tried once. <laughs> you've got, to, you've got to be a man to get into the cold water. Man, up there. When, you get, when you get out of the water and you've got purple feet, I mean, anyway. Yeah. So he came over and stayed, and we discussed uh, you know, me doing it again this year and the uh, uh, possibility of doing a fundraiser. It sounded like a great idea. So I'm yeah. going out there for a couple of days. My friends own a wonderful inn there in... Um, in Donegal, in Dunfanaghy, and so I'm going to go stay there and decompress and do some computer work and chill and uh, do that. Then I come back and I do the Aragal on next Wednesday. Uh, that'll be great. Have a day off and then go up to Castle Rock and I'll do a couple of dates up at Caruso's, which is a lovely little... Caruso's Coffee. Oh, it's lovely. It's a great place. Yeah. So I'm doing that, and then over to the Endler Delta Blues Club in Comber. And then I have uh, I have one day off, and then I head over to the Merchant and do a show at the Merchant. And in between all this, hopefully we're going to be back on Ralph McLean's show. <laughs> Ralph. <laughs> right, or Ralph. Yeah, and he's always having me on, so that's great. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the, the Tuesday after next, we'll be at, at the Merchant and uh, going to stay there. That'll be great. It's a beautiful place. And then immediately after that, Wednesday through the following Monday, will be jazz and, or the, the Blues Fest. The Blues Fest with the Guinness International uh, Blues Point. Fest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ian Sands. Ian, Ian, I have Thank to get Ian you. into the studio, but he's too busy, believe it or not. And you can understand that. Gee, I wonder why. Yeah, it's just that he's oh, man. organizing the Blues it's Fest. It's really crazy. And then we have one show at, J uh, oh, by the way, Jerry Morgan will be playing with me at the Jazz, at, at, at the uh, Warren Point Blues oh, Fest. Oh, good. So, and Johnny McCormick on bass from Dublin. And so we're going to do that. We've got four band shows, four acoustic shows, and a fundraiser for the hospice as well. Brilliant. And George Loudon looks like he's coming down to do a Q&A with people. And uh, I'll play it. And um, possibly Mickey is going to be able to make that as well. Yeah. So that's good. And um, then after that, I have a show down at JJ's Blues Club in Dublin. Then on the 28th, I pack. 29th, I fly home. Bang. Way 30th, back. I'm playing in California. <clears throat> what What is the... Uh, <laughs> you see, when you fly back to California, now, does the jet lag hit you when you're there? When you fly back... It's better back? going home than coming here. Yeah, because coming here, you, you get it, don't you? You lose time coming here, yeah. you gain time going yeah. back. So it's it's not so bad going home. Yeah. Com coming here, it takes me a good five days 
to get on rhythm. I mean, you know, and at, sleeping pattern and all. At, yeah, and I'm a kind of claustrophobic, so I don't like on a plane. I don't like sleeping by the window. Yeah, I, I have a hard time with that. So I'm always in the aisle. So my knees get bumped. People need to yeah. get up, but at the same time, it's in the aisle. It's kind of hard to get your rest, and so I'm usually writing or reading or something. So. Slept de sleep deprivation. And, and sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation is not good for a man at all, you know. Oh, no. So what about, do you, do you take your guitar on the plane and all with you? That's what I'm, Are I you sure you want to start this conversation? Yeah, <laughs> I want to know about this guitar. Do you you're take it on the plane with you? You're opening up Pandora's box on that. That's probably the, my biggest pee with travel is, is the plane flight thing with the instruments. Um, in America, we have rights now. Um, FAA has regulation yeah. on travel where as long as you, as there's room in the plane, somewhere on the plane, musicians or people that have musical instruments have rights. So... Because it's your work, isn't it? Well, it is your work, and I'm carrying around a very expensive guitar. Indeed you guitars. are, yeah. Um, so we, it's different there, but uh, here it hasn't quite caught on yet, and there's all these hidden fees, and there's all these different things that are going on that, you know, you have to do everything online now. And I feel bad for elderly people that travel yeah. because if they don't understand the, the internet and they don't understand the, the, you know, the learning curve of all that, yeah. they're stuck. I mean, they're, they're just, you know, everything has to be done online. And yeah. uh, a 29 quid flight from here to Italy will end up costing you 225 by the time you're done with it. Go I have sick. to carry around a scale and weigh my bag oh. and my guitar. And, such That's a load true. of rubbish, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I've even had to take apart my Stratocaster and what? unbolt the neck and throw it in my bag. Get away, Sean. Oh, no, it's crazy. That's bizarre. So I leave guitars, like I have a guitar in Italy. Now my electrics, I leave an electric here and I leave an electric in, in Italy. And, um, so that's what I have to work with. I mean, wow. At home, I'll show up with seven guitars. Here, I show up with one or two. That's Bizarre. So I'm always tuning in. I play a lot of different keys, so I'm always changing the tunings. And I apologize for that, but it's kind of out of my hands until I'm making six digits. You know? Yeah, <laughs> even seven digits seven today. Digit, you know what I mean? It'll, you'll be making seven after this Panther show. Absolutely. That's for sure. Well, I have to say, Sean, it's been. It's been enlightening, and thank you. I really appreciate it for coming in the studio, because our, our studio manager's giving me that there, well, which, I know I the old time out, you know. I apologize Don't be, no, 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 this, look, this is a banter show, Sean, you know what I mean? And uh, this, we're waiting on this man for a long, long time to come into the show, you know. But you've been here, there, you've been busy, and uh, it's great to finally get you in. So any, do you want to shout out to anybody there? Well, I'd say mom, but rest your soul. <laughs> so all my friends back at home, and the man over there on the, the mixing Aaron, board. Yeah. There he is. What yeah. team are you for, boy? What was it? Microphone again. Look. Oh. oh. The microphone again. Oh, did the that singer just songwriter wow. on twice. How long has that been going on? Just now? Just just oh, there now, thank yeah. Goodness. Oh, he's wearing that's uh, that's St. Paul's school Gaelic team, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. That's that's the, the Gaelic football, you know. Or the hurling as well, doesn't it? So the hurling's some sport, isn't it? Uh, it is, it is. You know? I, I, I don't play it, but yeah. I can appreciate it. Don't play it. No. I'm warning you now, you do not play it. <laughs> so anyways, all my people back home, yes. I love you very much. And uh, Ireland, I love you too, and thank you. And uh, all my new friends in Italy and in Switzerland and everywhere that I'm going, uh, God bless you all, and thank you so much. And so there you thank go. Thank you, Tony. Friends, appreciate you. from me and Jerry, or from me and Jerry, would you quit? From me and Sean, <laughs> give us a big raiser there. And give, give Sean a raise. Oh, that's a boy. That's a crockway. He's typical 100% oh, Yuri, man. I gotta watch quit? my back around this town no, now. Not at all. No, yeah, you know, just watch our front around this oh. town, Jim McCrone. Well, Sean, I have to say thank you very oh, much for you. coming in. Yeah, and thank we'll you. catch up with you at the Blues Festival, no doubt, you know. And Please do. Maybe have a chinwag with you down there. Yeah, pick up a Loudon guitar. They're pick up amazing. a Loudon. Yeah. George Loudon, you're an amazing character, and mm. your factory, everything to do with Loudon he's guitars a gentleman. is serious, isn't it? Yeah. You know, his crack is 100%. Oh, boy, he's Not serious. 90. No, no, no. <laughs> he's, the crack's 100 with, <laughs> with a George. Well, friends, thanks very much for tuning in again. From me and Sean, we're out of here. Riser. Riser. <laughs>